Want to hear my top major insights from 2018? Tune in. This episode kicks off Thursday's Thoughts, a second weekly podcast episode featuring just me. <laughs> Moving forward, Mondays will be conversations and Thursdays will be my solo episodes where I share quickie tips and personal stories to help you embrace your own personal and professional evolution. In this episode, you'll learn my top four major insights of 2018 and the very personal stories behind them. I know you'll be able to relate to at least one of these insights. After all, we are all on the same journey. Today's episode is sponsored by How to Conquer Your Bullshit with CPR, my free training that will help you bring your message to the masses. Sign up for the free training at rubyframon.com forward slash CPR. And finally, whether you're new to this podcast or a loyal thought leader, please make sure to drop a rating and review on iTunes. Now let's dive in to these amazing, incredible insights that have profoundly changed my life. And my hope is that they will change yours too. Hey, thought leaders. So let's drop right in to my major insights for 2018. Now, let me tell you a little backstory first. So my husband and I have this ritual where on December 31st every year, we get together, we grab our coffees, we grab our journals, and we reflect on the year that we just had. And we do so by first creating a celebration list. So we actually identify everything that we're celebrating, the accomplishments, the wins, the positive shifts, the experiences, so that we can remember just how blessed we are. Um, and then we, we reflect on the major insights that we learned in that year. The reason why this is so important is because if you do not identify and put a word or, or put your insights into words, then you will most likely not fully integrate that insight into your being. So it's kind of like just looking at the insight and letting it go and not fully integrating it so that it can then help you in the future. So by taking the time to identify what these insights are, you are offering yourself an opportunity to integrate these insights into your being, to up-level your way of showing up, and to gift yourself with new tools and resources to navigate through some of the shit that you go through. So I'm going to share my major insights, and there are four not three. Usually I try and do a top three, but for 2018, four kept coming up and I just couldn't ignore it. So I'm going to share my top four insights from 2018, as well as the backstory um, so that you can understand why the insight is important. And the reason why I'm sharing these with you is because one, I feel called to, <laughs> simple as that. And number two, I believe that in sharing our insights, we can learn from one another. So my hope is that you gain some sort of insight through my insights that you can apply in your own life. Okay, so let's dive in. Insight number one, I am supported. Now we've heard this a lot, right? People use this affirmation a lot. For me, this, this was so crucial. Because for the majority of my life, um, for at least, you know, 17 years of my life, I had felt as though I was not supported. I had a history, like a real traumatic history of being the black sheep in my family and of being completely um, disregarded in my own trauma uh, and left to face it on my own blatantly even and by when i went through that i remember wishing people would just support me and i also remember while i was asking people for support i was being shunned for it so this created a program in my unconscious mind that said two things one it is not safe to ask for support and two, people won't support you. 
these programs are programs that I had been running on up until 2018. And it was starting to become super obvious that these programs were no longer serving me. Now, what's important to understand is at some point in our life, we pick up these programs. Our unconscious mind picks up these programs because it's protecting us in some way, shape, or form. So for me during that time, that program was serving a purpose. It was preventing me from feeling more pain from, um, you know, by asking for support and being knocked down for it or being shunned for it. It was preventing me from experiencing that over and over and over again. And yet in 2018, that program was actually acting as a, as um, it, it was not serving me at all. It was actually creating more misery, both in my personal and professional life. And yet I didn't even recognize it. So it wasn't like January 1st, 2018. I was like, okay, I need to focus on fucking support. No, my word for the year was connection. And what I, my intention for that word at the beginning of the year was I want to connect more with others. What I realized throughout the year was that it, the, the word came to me not because I needed to connect more with others, but because I needed to connect more with myself. And through that connection to myself, through doing a lot of uncomfortable deep work and shadow work, I realized that this support thing was a big fucking issue. You know, it was holding me back in so many ways and holding my business back. I mean, I was trying to do everything all by myself. And the biggest surprise for me out of all of this, it wasn't that I wasn't asking for support. I, I pretty much knew about this. I was aware of this. What I wasn't aware of is that I didn't receive support. And that was a major, major surprise. And, and you might find this true for you too. Um, just think about it though. I never used to see all, all the people around me who were offering support because what I went through during those traumatic years, that was a whole other life. But in my 30s while I was running this business, I have had a lot of support come my way. I've had people reach out via text. I've had people reach out via phone. I've had people make offers and I would blatantly turn them down, blindly so, and not even be conscious of myself doing so. You know, someone would offer help and I maybe I'd ignore their text for months or just completely or ignore their email or just be like, oh, no, 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 I'm okay. Because unconsciously the program is running that people don't really support me or it's not safe to be supported. So for the way in which I reprogram this or create a new pattern for myself is I put myself up to a challenge. And I said, you know what? I'm going to ask for and receive support like once a week. I'm going to do that. I remember sharing this at um, the Rich Litvin Intensive. I was working as a coach uh, on Rich's team. And our coaching team would get together uh, between sessions and just coach each other. And I remember sharing this. And someone said, well, why not just make this a daily thing? And I, I think I might have almost vomited in that moment when <laughs> she said that. But she was like, why not just challenge yourself to ask for and receive support every single day? Because imagine how dramatically that would change your life. And this was like in September 2018. So I'd already been practicing this and leaning into it, but not at this, to this degree. And my immediate reaction was like, no, that's too much. And then I sat with it for about a week and made the decision, you know what, I'm going to fucking do this. I can do this. I'm going to do this. And so I started practicing uh, using those muscles, right? Vocalizing my support and also receiving support and recognizing the support that was coming my way. Not only did this show me just how supported I am, but it also helped me clarify who my real tribe and community is. It helped me clarify who are the people that I really want to hold on tight to, the people that I really want in my inner circle versus the ones that I can now let go of. So major insight number one, I am supported. Major insight number two, I am at my greatest when I drop perfection and focus on being. <laughs> this is coming from the double Virgo. 
perfection has been just something that I've leaned into my entire life unconsciously. So uh, there's just this striving for perfection that is so innately built into me. The reason this came up is 2017 was the first year I ran my three-day event, Amplified Soul Live, the first iteration of it. And it went off without a hitch. Let me tell you, it was fucking perfection. And it had to be. I rehearsed every moment of that event in my home office for like two months prior, literally, literally going through each slide one by one, practicing what I was going to say. I mean, it was perfected and it went off amazingly well. I wouldn't change a thing. I think it was, it was an incredible event, transformed a lot of lives. And then event number two came up, the second version of Amplified Soul Live, and that was 2018. And that was taking place in March, 2018. And I remember it was January and I was starting to feel super fucking nervous, like super fucking anxious, like, holy shit, I achieved this amazing fucking event and did it exceptionally well last year. How am I going to pull this off again? That was what was going through my head. And I wanted to perfect it, but I was almost like self-sabotaging myself because there was this, it's really hard to explain. Like there's a part of me that wanted to, drive forward and perfect by rehearsing again. And then there's this other part of me that really just wanted to drop in a little deeper because as, as well as I facilitated the first event, I, I felt like there was a lot more opportunity to connect even deeper with my attendees. And that could only happen in impromptu ways. But when you perfect an event schedule in that way, there's no room for impromptu. So I was left with this really um, overwhelming, anxious feeling of like, what do I do? And I was um, on a gifted coaching call with Rich Lipman again. Um, FYI, if you guys don't know him, he's amazing. Follow him. But he he had gifted this coaching session to me and we were talking about that, about the anxiety, about the fears and out of nowhere, out of nowhere, he changes the topic and he says, Hey Ruby, I totally forgot. I had this workshop planned for this weekend and unfortunately, and I'm unable to make it. Can you take over? Now FYI, he lives in LA as well. So For I, in an instant, like without even thinking, said, yes, of course. And he said, so you could facilitate this workshop this weekend. You're confident. And I said, for sure. And he said, then why aren't you confident that you can facilitate your three-day event, which is two months from now? And that was like a bomb dropped. (laughs) I was, it blew my mind. Like, yes, I am confident at any any given day, if someone asked me to go on stage, I could just fucking jam and create a very transformative space for those in attendance. I'm confident in that. This is a knowing for me. And yet here I am trying to perfect something that really doesn't need perfection. So I showed up to the second annual Amplified Soul Live event, my event, And I hadn't rehearsed my slides once. And FYI, I had created all new content. I basically just created the content and let it go. And I showed up to the event. And there were so many times when I didn't even know it was on the next slide or when I wouldn't even use the slides. But I was able to drop in and connect on such a deeper level with my audience and co-create deeper, more profound, transformative experiences for those in in attendance. Plus, it was a much more potent uh, experience for myself and the audience. It was incredible, and it felt a lot better. There's so much freedom in just showing up and being, being who I am, being in my gifts, being in all of that. So that is my second biggest insight is knowing that I'm at my greatest when I drop perfection and just focus on being. Insight number three, I am a powerful coach 
teacher, and guide. And I'll admit, this one makes me want to barf a little just by saying it out loud. And I'll tell you why. Um, in our Indian culture, there's this weird um, dichotomy of being like humble and proud at the same time. The Indian culture shows a lot of things. Like we have big ass weddings to prove our wealth. I mean, that's where it all stemmed from. And we get big ass homes to prove that we're successful and cars and all of these things. This is what I grew up around. And yet we're also told to be super humble about what we have. You know, my mom would put, um, she'd take some black coal liner, like eyeliner, and put dots behind my ears to prevent being jinxed because she thought I was beautiful. And she's like, you can't be too beautiful. People are going to jinx you. And so I was really taught to, to be super fucking, I mean, I don't even think humble is the word, but you don't talk about your or show your successes in this way. And in that, my unconscious mind turned that into, well, you can't be proud of your gifts. You know, you can't be proud of, of the fact that this is what you do and this is what you're great at. And then on the other side of this, you know, running a coaching business, it's tough. Like running any entrepreneurial endeavor is really fucking tough. And as entrepreneurs, we can beat ourselves up over our failures far more than we ever celebrate our successes. And in 2018, I, I, first of all, I worked with some fucking epic epic souls, like just incredible clients came my way and they were incredibly aligned with the, who I am and who I really am passionate about serving. And that came to me because I became a lot more clear with my messaging through my experiences of, of, of coaching them and, and being in this super aligned coaching container I was able to witness their transformation, but they also gifted me. I mean, these clients that I had in 2018, I, I'm getting um, emotional sharing this, but my clients in 2018 did not hold back in sharing with me how much they had transformed and how appreciative they were. And I really believe, I really strongly believe that this is God's work, um, that these clients came to me for this reason, to validate something for me, something that I innately knew, that my soul knew, but the human, the very human part of me needed to know, needed to be reassured of. And that is that I am a powerful coach teacher and guide in that I really help my clients create the results and transformations that they deeply desire. So that was insight number three. And that's also an invitation for you to look at your gifts and see how you can own them at a deeper level. Now, the final insight of 2018, my final major insight, insight number four. This one's a goodie. Self-care allows me to show up at my best consistently. <laughs> when I first started my coaching business, I started as a self-love coach in 2014. Um, I was one of the first self-love coaches out there and in this way. And self-care was my jam. Like, it's just what I did. I, it was really easy for me because I had just left behind a social media marketing business where I was working 75 to 80 hours a week, um, running five different companies, social media platforms. Each company had about four to five different platforms and running all of that with just me and an intern. That's it. So I was fucking burnt out. I had adrenal fatigue. It was tough. When I started my coaching business, I'd committed to doing this differently. Like I, I wanted to pursue what I'm most passionate about in a different way where it didn't leave me feeling burnt out. So I'd made that commitment to myself. The first two years of my business were great. Like I, I was really taking care of myself. Um, 
it was reflecting in the results that I was achieving. I mean, I, between the years of like 2014 to like 2017, I fucking skyrocketed. I feel like I achieved so much more. I mean, 2017 alone was like a year of major, major achievements. And I was in my deepest self-care in that year. But towards the end of 2017 is when shit started hitting the fan. When I somehow found myself, well, let's not say, let's be honest here. I didn't somehow found, find myself. I created more of a hustle environment where I needed to keep busy and I needed to hustle and I was burning the candle at both ends and I was disregarding my needs, um, sacrificing my needs to take care of others and other things in my business. And it showed in 2018, it showed up by the time I had finished the 2018, which was the second Amplified Soul Live event, I was totally burnt out. And I had just filled my business with incredible, incredible clients. And I really feel that the reason why I was able to work with those clients in such a powerful way is because I was so fucking excited and I let the excitement, the adrenaline of excitement keep me going. But I was really burnt out. And I was feeling it. My body was starting to feel it. And I started getting a lot of different health um, issues come up again after like years of really taking impeccable care of my health. And it just became really obvious that the way in which I take care of myself is directly reflected in my business. When we're not taking care of ourselves physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, that is going to show up in our business because we are the foundation for our business. When I first received this message, I, I was in ceremony, plant ceremony for those of you who don't know. Um, this is a very spiritual ceremony and it's something that um, I did three times in 2018 and will continue to do to expand my growth. But the first plant ceremony I did, the message that come up was all about self-care. And I remember the next day waking up and being so fucking pissed that that is what the plants decided to tell me. And I, I literally shared this in our integration circle the next day. And I said, I'm really fucking pissed. Like all of you had these beautiful experiences and I'm sitting here pissed off because I didn't get what I wanted. What I wanted was help with my business. What I got was slow down. And it was a message that was like really drilled to me throughout that night. Slow down, slow down, slow down, receive support, receive support. I started connecting the dots long after ceremony took place. And I saw all the ways in which I was sabotaging my self-care. I saw all the ways in which I wasn't honoring my needs. And I saw all the ways in which I was putting other people before myself. And that pissed me off. But I also took ownership for that and realized that me and only me, like I am the only one who can fucking shift that pattern. So by taking ownership of it, I began to repattern myself and reprogram myself back into a state of self-care. In fact, one of my goals for um, 2019 is to take impeccable care of myself and my needs. Because this, is a, this will be directly reflected in all areas of my life, including my business. And yes, thought leaders, sometimes we do have to slow down to speed up, whatever that looks like for you. If you're not taking care of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, even like either all of them or even one of them, it's going to reflect in what you do and it's going to influence the way in which you show up. So for me, it was a very, very powerful insight to finally, like just finally have that click. And when I say integrate these insights, what I mean is I am now taking impeccable care of myself. I am now back on my health regime, eating healthy, working out regularly, meditating, journaling, doing all the things that I know nourish my mind, body, and spirit so that I can continue showing up for myself, for my community, for you in a really powerful way. So those are my four major insights from 2018. I'm going to recap them right now. Insight number one, I am supported. 
Insight number two, I am at my greatest when I drop perfection and focus on being. Insight number three, I am a powerful coach, teacher, and guide. That's all about owning your gifts. Insight number four, self-care allows me to show up at my best consistently. And again, I share these with you in hopes that you'll gain your own insights through listening to this and you'll also then take the time to integrate them into your life so that you can continue evolving and becoming the leader that you're here to be. So that's it for the first edition of Thursday's Thoughts. Um, If you dig that, let me know. Let me know what you think of these um, Thursday solo episodes. Uh, Just hit me up on social media. I am at, oops, wait, let me say that again. It's at I am Ruby on all social media um, channels. Uh, Instagram is currently my favorite, but I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, I want to say thank you so much for joining me on today's Thought Leader, where I'm challenging you to rise up, speak up, and create a movement. If you're ready to bring your mission to the masses, please download my free online training. It is free. You have no excuse not to. rubyframon.com forward slash CPR. And be sure to drop a rating and review on iTunes. So I look forward to hearing from you and hearing what you think about today's episode. Also, please do reach out and share your major insights from the previous year, from 2018. I'd love to hear them. Thank you so much. I will see you here on Monday for a brand new episode of today's Thought Leader.